Hey guys, Fushiro, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Club. Today, I've got a 250 subscriber special AMA with questions submitted by you guys on what I do in this channel. And I need a new video for my, for my channel, so I think this is a perfect time to do this. And without further ado, let's look at the board. Question number one, what decks do you have? Of course. All right. Well, let's start with these right here. I have a uh, hat mirror um, based on first and second place from uh, Nationals 2014. I have chaos mirror, from, so it's Nationals of 2004 with a first place list. Well, what is I believe to be the third, the first place list, and then another list that is more generic, more towards what I think the format is like you know Yada Lock. Like this deck doesn't even play Yada Grassi, but this one does. Goat format. I've got a, a classic Goat control list, and I've got a bit of a chaos list right here. These are dice. Now over here, I have January 14 to April 14. Um, you call it Firefist format. I like to call this Hoban format, where I have spell books, Erratic Rulers, Infernity, Fire Kings, Mythic Ruler. I have Tidal Mermail and Undyne Mermail. I have three quarters Firefist. I have plus one Firefist, another plus one Firefist. I have two Bujin lists, one with Kaiser, one without. I have two Gear Gear lists, one Pure, one Karakuri. I have um, Tengu lists, I have two Teledead lists, one with Royal Oppression, one without. And then I have 2009 uh, Dark Strike Fighter format, so Nationals 2009. I have two Glad lists. I used to have uh, Glads for 08, but I moved these decks to 09 because I think 09 Glad is a more of an interesting deck, as well as um, it still keeps up with the other decks that are in this format really well. Like I'd say it's the fourth best deck in the format, whereas Cat, Black Wings, and Lice Runs were the top three. I think it works really well for it. And now I've got two Light Sworn lists. One's a more aggro list, one's a more control list. I have two black wing lists, one's pretty, one is very generic, one is a little bit teched out. I've got two cat lists, one that played Judgment and one that didn't play Judgment. And also I have Salvo Dad. We have 2012-2013 uh, Mermail format. And in this format we have uh, two Mermail lists, one mer mono Mermail, another mono Mermail. I might make this an undyne Mermail list too if I can ever find a comfy spot with it. I've got two Dino Rabbit lists over here in the corner. One is a uh, Macro Rabbit, one is not. I have two wind-up lists, both of them pretty similar, one's generic, one's more teched out a little bit. Two insector lists, one with hand trap, one without. I have two hero lists, one's Gemini beat, one's living hero. I have two agent lists, one's hand trap, one's like more trap based, so called the haunteds and card troopers. Then I have uh, dino fist, I could play rabbit fist in the future, but right now I'm dino fist. Uh, frog monarchs, six sams, chaos dragons, and uh, heretics. And then I have Edison format up here at the top where I have two quick draw dandy warrior lists. One is uh, the Jeff Jones list that won Shonen Jump Edison. One is a list that got top four. I have two gadget lists. One's mocking the gadget. One is pure gadget controls. Then I have a uh, flame Vell. Then I have caliber cat. And then I have flame Vell cat. This was a, uh, a deck that I found on Pojo forums that was talked about, but I never found a good list because it's like such a short format. So it's like your list of my own creation. I'm a huge fan of it though. The deck's kind of crazy. I have glad beast. I have black wings and I have light swords. Yeah, a total of 60 decks. Um, there are a lot. Question number two. Are you going to build more decks? Uh, when I first made the script for this, I had about 54 decks built at the time. But since then, I've actually built six more decks to help round out the formats. And I am I can say pretty solidly, I'm not interested in building any more decks. And that's why I feel pretty comfortable making this video now, because I think these are the decks I'm going to have for quite a long time. Will you build X deck? Um, no, I will not build X deck. I'll listen to ideas, but odds are I'm not going to build it. Sorry to break your heart, I'm not interested in building many other formats or expanding on them. I could build more hat format, but it's very similar to the format before that, and I prefer the format before. I could build, like, Insectors for 2014, I could build Spellbooks for 2012, I could build Machina Gadget from 2012. But I have friends that already have all those decks built, so I don't really need to build them. I can just play against them if I really need to. I could also build more decks for 2005 like Chaos Warriors, Zombies, or Monarchs. But I, again, I've got friends that I've go format, and that's just not really what I want to focus on. Uh, question 4. You should try X Carter Variant. Now that, I'm always willing to try. I've been making these videos for 5 years now, and a lot of these decks I've had for that entire time. So I've tried a lot of really interesting cards, and I've learned a lot about the format because of that. So please, I invite, I, I want to share the knowledge with you so I can help make everyone more informed on these formats. 
Question five. Why have you built what you have? Because I think that's the Yu-Gi-Oh that is like closest to my heart. I think that 2009 to 2014 is just like my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh. So I don't really stray much outside of those borders. I used to have more decks built for other formats in the past, but I narrowed it down to just these ones because it's the Yu-Gi-Oh I like playing the most. Question seven. Why call it Tengu Plant and not Synchrocentric? Or Frognarks or Chaos Drag? Um, I just don't like those names. I call the names that I like calling them. I think Synchrocentric is very sort of, um, tween era online culture kind of name because it's like around 2011 and I just don't like the name of it. Also, there will be games where you just synchro one time the entire game. Or because most of the time you're just dominating with Thunder King and Caius and Tengu's just beating down. Like that happens a lot in Tengu Plan. And I think that calling it Synchrocentric is a, like a misleading name because it kind of like wipes over the control aspect of the format. And with frog narcs, I just don't like the word narc. <laughs> Chaos dragons, I... Just say the last syllable. Question 8. Why do you call it Hoban format? Well, that's a really good question because that's not really a thing that people really do now, is it? The entirety of January to April 2014 is just... It's a really long period that did not have a really notable dominant format or deck, something that made it really outstanding. You could call it Fire Fist format, but I just don't think that's really the best way to call it because there is like there's like six decks in that format that are arguably tier one. And calling it Fire Fist, even if it wasn't the best deck in the game, I think is just a very misleading thing to do. I'd rather call it Hoban format because of how respected the words of Hoban and other top players were at the time of that format. ARG articles were flying everywhere and people were watching all the deck profiles of all the players, all the Yugi tubing was popping off really hard at that time. Like, Yugi tubing had existed very consistently since 2009, but it was really like then that it got massive. But I really feel that around that era, there was a sort of a mass gaining of knowledge in the game where a lot of lower level players were really starting to reach a better understanding of the game. And I think that's because of the work of players like Patrick Hoban or Billy Brake or Corey McDuffie. The stuff that they were putting out and the, the articles they'd post that were really kind of like spreading the knowledge for more players to get. The access they had to it at their fingertips with all of the Yugi Tubing media that was made. And I think that naming the format after a player that was so highly regarded in that format to a point where almost every single deck was playing Upstar Goblin because it was just the, the format where it worked. Because over half the decks play triple upstart in that format. They either play upstart or reckless or sometimes even both. And I think it's important to kind of put respect on the name. And so I like calling it Hoban format because of that. Question nine, what's your favorite format, deck, card, or mirror match? Well, my favorite format is actually probably Mermail format from the year before that, because I really like the power cards that exist in the format. I think it makes for a very um, high and varied amount of gameplay. Um, of the decks in there, I'd say my favorite decks are probably um, Chaos Agents, or Chaos Dragon, or maybe um, Synchro Cats, or perhaps um, or perhaps uh, Heretic Rulers. I'm a fan of a lot of those decks, or Mythic Rulers more than Heretic Rulers. I'm definitely a fan of all of those decks. I also really like Teledad, and I really love the 2009 Glad lists. I think those are really fun decks to play. Um, my favorite card is Definitely Tragodia. I love all the options that Tragodia offers when you're able to activate him. I love that you can attack into a monster, you you take damage, you drop Tragodia, and you're able to run over with your own monster. I love that you can take your opponents and then you can target the one in your graveyard and go for a rank 4 play. I think that's a really sick thing that you can do. I don't know if they, if they knew that you are going to do that eventually when they created the card, but the fact that you are able to do that when Aziz came out was something really, really awesome. I think that makes it for a really interesting card. Um, my favorite mirror match is probably the Tengu Plant Mirror from 2011. I'm a huge fan of the the options and the amount of control versus the amount of aggro in that format. So I'm a huge fan of the Tengu Plant Mirror. Question 10. What content do you upload? Uh, I upload a lot of retro Yu-Gi-Oh duels, as you know. I'm working on writing and work- I'm working on writing uh, more in-depth deck profiles than I've done in the past. I want my deck profiles to be where if you have a copy of the cards in front of you, if you have all of them, if you watch my deck profile, you should at least be able to play the deck yourself and be able to practice it and get more used to the plays and be able to play it on your own from there. 
That's what I want my deck profiles to be able to do. So I'm working on, on those right now. And also, I uh, have a draft cube. I have a four or six player draft cube built right here. It's built at all times, and I'm always testing out a couple cards in it. I plan on uploading a video that talks about this cube, because it's been a long time since I last uploaded a video talking about my draft cube. And now it's uh, permanently built, so I can, so I always have it built ready to go. Like, the packs are even built right now. You can kind of see it in there. So I'm always able to be playing that, and I'd like to record that more in the future. Question 10.5. Have you considered post-commentary or recording single video matches? Um, I don't really want to do post-commentary because I don't have the ability to go in and edit all of the duels that I record and be able to narrow things down and to do post-commentary over them. You'd have to watch them over again. And that's just a lot of pa that's just a lot of stuff that I just don't have the availability to do. I don't really have the ability to go on the dueling book and just hit next play, next play, next play, and talk over everything as as I'm watching it and just give commentary like that. I'd have to record the duel, play it, record it, go in here, edit it, shorten it down, do post commentary, and upload it. And I just can't make multiple matches a week and do that. And same thing with that, I don't, want, I don't want to do single video matches because some of the duels I upload are 18 to 25 minutes long. And I don't want to have three games that are all 25 minutes long and upload an hour long video. I don't have the time to upload that because my internet's not that great here. So it's kind of just what I have to work with. So instead, I try to capture the vibe of IRL retro Yu-Gi-Oh dueling. Where we're, I'm hanging out with my friends and I'm just playing the game while we're talking about whatever. I do plan on having background music in the future once I really find the right music that jams with what I'm doing here. I plan on doing that in the future, and I will be putting that in post-production, so it'll be nice. And maybe a couple intro cards, and try to pretty up the video some, I'm slowly working on that. Question 11. Will you play X versus Y deck? Or how about cross-format matchings? Um, I do, um, please, if you want to watch me play um, one deck versus the other in here, please feel free to make recommendations for that. I'm love. I I'm definitely taking requests. As long as I can find a person that's able to play one of the decks, I'll play the other. I know the basics of all 60 decks. I would say I'm pretty well versed in like 75% of the decks, but I can play all 60 of them at any time. Um, the hard part is finding an opponent that can play one of those two decks, but I should be able to make that work, so feel free to make suggestions. However, I don't really want to focus on doing cross-format play, because that's just not really what I do with my channel. It's not that I don't like it, I would love to do cross-format stuff, it's just that while I have these tools here, I really want to capture all of the formats as they are first. I'd rather focus on doing that, so, uh, though in the future, I'm looking forward to doing cross-format list play and uh, playing like that. For now, I do not plan on doing that. Question 12. Do you use old rulings? Uh, yes. If we're playing pre-April 2012, we will be doing Ignition Priority, so I can summon BLS, and fearing the Book of Moon, I will banish the DD Warrior Lady that they have set to make sure that I don't lose the Book of Moon. Like, that's a thing that I will definitely, that we definitely do here. If I'm looking up old rulings, I will use uh, metagame.com. I'll use the I'll use the Wayback Machine to check up on any card made before like February 2009, so I can find almost all the cards that are in all of these decks on that site. If it's printed before that and like you know mid 2011 when they start doing problem solving card text, that's like the one gray area on cards with rulings that might be a little difficult to interpret, but it for the most part it works out pretty well. Question 13: Why do you not use side decks? Um, simply put, I just, it's just not ergonomic to. I don't want to have to be able to be, I don't want to be the one putting back all of the cards back into the main decks after the matches. I don't expect my opponents to know all of the deck lists and be able to unside properly. And it's just a huge mess of things to do. If I have to get, you know, 26, like, if I have to get 24 copies of Debunk for 2014, and then 24 more copies for, um, 20, for 2013, I just can't do it. I don't want to have to get those cards. It's hard to deal with it. Even if I have six of every good card for all the side decking, I still wouldn't want to do it because it's just way too much to manage. And even knowing what each side deck would have is just a huge hassle. I've looked into it. I've tried to make it work, but it's just not feasible at this time. Question 14. Doesn't that change how it reflects on the format? Um, you're absolutely right. I wish it weren't so, but because of that, there's a certain decks that I just don't play in these formats at all. This is exactly why I don't have anti-meta built anymore, is because I feel the anti-meta decks just um, had way too much power without side decking, and I felt like that just wasn't fair to the game. So I just don't have those built anymore, I've instead focused more on the tier 1 decks. 
there are definitely certain decks I didn't build for a long time because of this. Like in Mermail format, I did not have Mermail built until about two weeks ago. Because I did not feel good to have that deck in the format when it was so vastly overpowered in 2013. But now that I have more decks that counter it that are in the format, like Frog Monarchs and Heratics, I feel safer having Mermail in the format because I know there's more checks to it than there used to be in the past. So by having a more robust build of the format, I feel that it is easier to just have w more winning matchups, even if some of the matchups are really unfair, like Insectors versus Macro Rabbit is really, really brutal, but luckily there's a version of Dino Rabbit that doesn't play Macro Cosmos, that if the person is being benevolent, they'll pick that instead. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just making it work. Question 15. How do you research formats or learn how to play? Um, well luckily I've played since 2002, so I've already got basic experience in all of these formats, especially from 2009 onwards. That's why I've kind of, again, I started playing again. I started getting cards again in 2009, 2010. Like slowly my, um, my friends are learning the decks and are getting better at them because they're interested in playing more and learning more. 16. What's your history in Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, um, TLDR. I've played three, I've had three collections since 2002. The first two were stolen over dumb significant events in my life. Uh, I started playing at a card shop when I was a kid. I learned from magic players. Um, in my second collection era, I played at the local library. I played a bunch of shoebox Yu-Gi-Oh with all of them because I had no original collection. I didn't want to get cards again. So I just played with whatever they gave me and I got, I garnered a very large appreciation for casual Yu-Gi-Oh! as opposed to the competitive environment that I was raised in by playing with those kids at the library. That was something special, I definitely, for sure. And then my third collection, um, which started in late 2009, early 2010, I started getting cards again because I was teaching my cousins how to play. And, uh, in 2010, the Machina Structure Deck was announced, and I was, um, very bored on a family vacation over in Philadelphia, so I got three of that structure deck, and I just messed around with that the entire time I was over there in Philly, and that was really fun, and ever since then, I've just, I've just been back in it ever since then, and this collection has just amassed since then. In 2013, I became a judge for the game, um, well, because there is, um, the college that I went to had a new Yu-Gi-Oh! club that was coming out, and I, and I realized that they would need a judge for the tournaments that they were going to do, so I became a judge for that. And ever since then, I focused on playing the game more analytically. And then after that, you know, about two years later, in late 2015, I started building all of the retro formats back here. And I asked myself back then, what did I want to do with this game in five years? And I had no good answer for it. So instead, I focused on using my collection for something more applicable than just having a lot of pretty cards. I'd rather have cards that people can play, people can use and kind of like teach more about the game and just enjoy more of the game than what's being played at the time. Question 17. Where do you think I should start with Retro Yu-Gi-Oh? Um, honestly, you should look to where your nostalgia wants to wander. Uh, you should just go for whatever you think you want to play and just try it out. As far as like, you know, collecting cards, like that's definitely like, I don't recommend anyone invest in building a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh decks because it is not as easy to actually play the decks as much as you want them to play. It is very difficult, in fact. I'm very blessed that I'm able to play these as much as I can right now, and I'm trying to make the most of it by getting a lot of recordings done, but there were a lot of times in my life when I would just not be able to record for months because there's just no one around me that was like available and able to play, and it'd just be really hard to get anything done. Question 18. I want to have decks like yours. Um, look to question 17. I don't recommend it. If I had started building these decks in 2021, there is no way I would have ever even tried to get the decks look nearly as nice as I have them now. The only reason I have these is because I built them when I did. I started in 2015. I picked up Secret Torrential Tributes when they were less than a dollar. I got all of the nice staples when no one was playing them because back then the only things that were popular were Goat Format and Dragon Rulers. Some people played Edison, some people played Teledad, but for the most part, like retro formats, like no one cared about retro Yu-Gi-Oh at all back then. It just was not on the radar. Nowadays, it's a completely different market. The collector's market is popping off. There's no way I could get the decks to look like the way they are now without sinking in a disgusting amount of cash. I got these cards when they were way cheaper than they are now. Question 19. Are you going for max rarity? Hell no. 
frankly, there's only about 30 or 40 cards left in this in this stuff that like I'm not comfortable with their rarity. I want to get them like a little bit nicer. Other than that, these decks are pretty much done as far as looking pretty goes. As long as it's foil, and as long as the foiling matches the other foils in the deck for the most part, I'm pretty much okay with that. As long as the decks all look good when I'm looking through them, I'm happy. And question 20 is, where else can I find you? Well, I'm here, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Club. You can also find my secondary channel linked on my um, linked on this channel, which is Fushira TV. That's where I upload um, highlights from my Twitch TV forward slash Fushira TV, where I do a lot of speed running, usually retro games, N64 and GameCube era for the most part. I also um, plan on recording you having Yu-Gi-Oh nights on the channel, where I'll be um, playing just Yu-Gi-Oh with my pals, just uploading from a camera and just, it's just pointing down and we're just dueling and just hanging out. I plan on having that on, on my Twitch as well, so come join out for that, Come mostly for speed running, but I'll be having those every so often. Once I get the camera situation sorted out, I'm still working on that. You can find me on Twitter as well, at, um, uh, at Fushiro, but instead of an O, it's a zero. So you can find me there. You'll also find that in my uh, YouTube description. And uh, that's pretty much where you can find me online. Because that's about where, all where I'm active. I'm a pretty busy person. I don't have much spare time, trust me. And that's really pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching this whole video. We made it all the way to the end. This is it, 31 minutes before editing, and I'm terrified of actually getting that done. <laughs> um, again, this is Bushiro. Make sure you sub to the club. Leave any comments in the quest and questions below, because this is a video that's going on the front of my channel, so I'll always be checking back on this one, looking for any new questions, because... This is the perfect place to ask questions, in my opinion. So make sure you leave anything below, and I'll try to get to you. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out.